Today I'm talking about the star Wormwood hitting the earth, what the book of Revelation says, and I'm interviewing Dr. Tom Horn, who has written the book The Messenger, and it is about Wormwood hitting the earth potentially in 2029, and he'll be giving you the details on that. And I'll also be answering your questions such as, what about all the recent UFO sightings? What does that mean? I'm Jimmy Evans. Welcome to The Tipping Point Show. Welcome to the Tipping Point Show today. We've got a very, very interesting show today because we're talking about Revelation chapter 8 where Wormwood, the star Wormwood, hits the Earth. Now, there is an asteroid headed toward Earth that NASA is talking about. All the experts are talking about it, about it hitting the Earth in April of 2029. And that's what this book is about by Thomas Horn. And we have a big interview coming, some in the free portion of the version of the free portion of the program. The rest of it will be in the subscriber portion uh, after the break. But he's written this book called The Messenger, and this goes into detail now about what the experts are saying, and that is there is an asteroid, a major asteroid on the way to Earth. Uh, and many of the uh, leading experts are saying it's going to hit the Earth on April the 13th, 2029. And so Dr. Thomas Horn is going to be talking about what that means related to the end times and when the beginning of the tribulation would occur, so stay tuned for that. Let me let me just kind of talk us up to the point of the interview with Dr. Horn. I've been talking about the book of Revelation, and there are basically 21 judgments. There, there are more than that, actually, in the book of Revelation, but you have the seven seal judgments, and we've talked about that, the seven trumpet judgments and the seven bowl judgments, and they get worse. Now, they start out really bad. Some people ask, does the tribulation begin with you know not not too much bad stuff happening, and then there's the great tribulation, that Jesus is the one that told us, in the middle of the uh, tribulation when the abomination of desolation occurs, he said the second part of that is great tribulation such as never occurred on the earth, and so the last three and a half years is definitely worse than the first three and a half years, but the first three and a half years are very very severe. The the first seal that is broken. Uh, there's a rider on a white horse, that's the Antichrist, and he has a bow, he's making war, he goes out to conquer and to make war. Then there's the rider on the red horse, that's the second seal that's broken. Uh, peace is taken from the earth and men kill each other. Okay. The third seal is the rider on the black horse and it says that there's famine and starvation. It takes an entire day's wage to buy enough food <clears throat> to survive that day. The fourth seal is broken uh, and it's the pale horse. A fourth of mankind is killed in different manner by starvation, by sword, and by wild animals. It's just absolutely awful. The four, the first four seals are terrible. The fifth seal is broken, and you have the altar of souls, where the people who have been martyred are asking God, "How much longer do we have to wait?" And the Lord says to him, "There's more coming. There, there's more people who are going to be martyred, and so you need to wait a little bit longer." What that means is there's going to be mass martyrdom. Uh, during the tribulation, the Antichrist killing people. Revelation 20 tells us about the people who have been beheaded because they would not worship the beast or take the mark of the beast. So this is mass martyrdom during the tribulation. When the sixth seal is broken, something very interesting happens. And this, this is kind of a preview of what we're talking about with Wormwood. It says, And I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the, the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the rich men, the mighty men, the commanders, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us, from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Well, I want to begin, this is talking about the sky growing black, and it begins, stars begin to drop like a fig tree drops its figs and all those things. Well, if you saw the movie Greenland, it's a good movie, and it talks about uh, extinction level event that happens 
when an asteroid hits the Earth. And what you notice in that movie, which is a very realistic movie, is an asteroid is not just one big rock, even though it is, ultimately. You have all of these stars, all of these uh, parts of the rock hitting uh, in waves. And so that would be like a fig tree losing its figs. And so we're going to read in just a minute in Revelation chapter 8 now, all of the events or the first four trumpets are going to sound in Revelation chapter 8. The seals are over. The first four trumpets are going to sound, and all of these are the same event. It's all wormwood that is about to hit, that hits, and the effect after it hits. So this is chapter 8. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. And then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. So they're about to sound their trumpets, and each as each one of them sounds the first four trumpets now, this is all talking about the same event. This is the first trumpet. Verse 7, the first angel sounded, and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. So now here comes this asteroid, and it begins to enter Earth's atmosphere. And what happens is the atmosphere becomes superheated. And so just like this, this star is coming, it's throwing off these parts of it that come in first. That's what it's talking about here. And then everything begins to get burned up. It begins to scorch the earth. Here's the second trumpet, same event. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. And a third of the sea became blood. And a third of the living creatures in the sea died. And a third of the ships were destroyed. Again, this is part of wormwood. This is part of the asteroid that comes and it strikes the ocean. And when it does, it just devastates the ocean and the sea life in the ocean. Okay, here's the third trumpet. Uh, then the third angel sounded and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch. And it fell on a third of the rivers and a third of the springs of water. The name of the star is wormwood. A third of the waters became wormwood and many men died from the water because it was bitter. Now you notice that this is affecting a third of the earth. Now that's a massive uh, amount of geography that this is covering, both in the sea and on the land, and it's making the waters poison so that people die when they drink the waters. And now later in Revelation 16, all sea life dies, and all of the waters of the earth are either poisoned or become blood. So the judgment upon the waters is one of the great judgments. Now, but what you'll notice now in the, the trumpet judgments and also in, or the seal judgments and the trumpet judgments, is it's partial. It's a fourth, it's a third, it's partial. When you get to the bold judgments of, uh, later on in the book of Revelation, it's total. Everyone's affected by those judgments. And so this is the fourth trumpet. Then the fourth angel sounded and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, a third of the stars, so the third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. And I looked, and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels were about to sound. Let me go back now to the sixth seal and read you what I read you earlier. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. So both in the sixth seal and also here at the fourth trumpet, we're told that the sky grows black. That's exactly what happens when a meteor or an asteroid hits the earth. That magnitude of an asteroid, it throws up all the dust. There's all like Mount St. Helens or something like that. All this dust is thrown up into the atmosphere and it becomes very dark, uh, very dark or black. And so these, these uh, judgments are describing one event, an asteroid is coming, it begins to superheat the earth, burn up all the green grass, all of that, then it throws off a part of itself in the ocean, then it hits the earth, and then the sky grows black. So the, the judgment of wormwood is a severe judgment that causes great death, great harm. It, it, you can understand the level of panic. Now, 
Dr. Tom Horn is going to join us here. And he had a personal experience that he's going to talk about, uh, a dream that he experienced that then led him to the truth of Apophis. Now, Apophis is what NASA is calling the asteroid that it's on its way here. And there's some level of disagreement that you'll hear him talk about that NASA is trying to deny that this is going to hit the Earth directly. Uh, you can imagine the panic that that would cause if everyone knew this was happening. And by the way, we have uh, sent up a spaceship for the purpose of finding asteroids and trying to blow them up for the purpose of them not even hitting the Earth. And so I personally believe that is in response to Apophis and what NASA is saying right here. So we're going to go right now to this interview by Dr. Tom. NASA has affirmed that there is an asteroid headed toward the Earth. They're calling it Apophis. And uh -huh. they're saying it's going to arrive, was it uh, 2029? Yeah, Friday the 13th, April 2029, and you may have seen in recent weeks where they are, they're really, they're reaffirming something they already did say, and I dealt with it in both the Wormwood Prophecy as well as the new book, The Messenger, uh, in which they're saying that while Apophis is going to make a very, very close miss of the Earth, they are saying that right now they're calling an all clear, saying that it's not going to impact the planet. Now, this is something that your listeners need to really pay attention to. There are numerous scientists that reacted to their most recent all clear, warning that the trajectory that, that they have made, their calculation of Apophis, is off by as much as 600,000 miles. Good. In fact, the mathematician Harry Lear uh, he uh, implies that Apophis is going to crash into Earth in eight years from now. And he even went so far as to send a, a letter to the President of the United States uh, begging him to have the U.S. government scientists cross-check those calculations immediately because he says that NASA's either playing a game with the trajectory stats uh, or they are just, in, you know, they're intentionally misleading the public and then he ends his letter. Anybody can log online and read his letter. He ends that dispatch with this ominous admonition that he thinks we're already out of time anyway. But maybe if we got on it now, and I think behind the scenes they are on it now, I think it's part of the reason Space Force was formed, uh, that they're trying to figure out how they might be able to mitigate uh, this uh, incoming event. But it's not just Lear. The, uh, Nathan Mirvold, who was the head of Microsoft, uh, the uh, science department for Microsoft for many years. Um, he, is con he is consistently listed every year in the top 100 scientists in the world. And he recently wrote a peer-reviewed paper that I referred to in the books called An Empirical Examination of Wise, Neo-Wise, Asteroid Analysis and Results, in which he not only refutes a lot of the data from NASA, he charges them outright with deliberately misreporting threats by these near-Earth objects and of behaving extremely deceptively with deliberate scientific misconduct. So in other words, he is saying this wasn't an accident on part. They are going out of their way to intentionally cover up very real, potentially imminent space threats, including Apophis. And then there's a video on YouTube that anybody can watch right now that's got the famous planetary scientist and the astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, very popular figure. And he says that on April 13, 2029, I'll quote, this is from the YouTube video, this is a quote, Apophis will come so close to Earth that it will dip below our orbiting communication satellites. It will be the largest, closest thing we have ever observed to come by Earth. The orbit we have for it now is uncertain because these things are hard to measure and hard to get an exact distance for so far. We cannot tell you exactly what that trajectory will be. So, uh, and this was the same thing that the astronomer from the Pentagon told me. Uh, he said, it's absolutely baloney. Well, he used a different word that I won't use. But <laughs> he said, it's absolute baloney. He said, you can't say that a stone as big as a pulpus, and it's a monster, is going to come literally below the satellites, knock out some of the satellites below the satellites that are in orbit around this planet, uh, and, and yet say with any certitude, but no worry, it's not going to strike the planet. He said that's absolute baloney. 
uh, watch watch the movie Greenland, where right up until the until, well, and so you know that in the yeah. beginning, NASA they're all saying no worries, it's just going to skim past, no big deal. Take pictures, draw cartoon pictures of it, and then all of a sudden, everybody starts heading for cover, uh, and, and that is what many of these people believe is going to happen with Apophis. Now, why would NASA be covering that up? Well, it's really obvious because. Uh, it would it would create mass panic, uh, and so and maybe meanwhile they might come up with some way to mitigate the incoming of that asteroid. You well, know, they're, they're sending Wilson. they're sending a spaceship up right now to blast an asteroid. They no, they that. are. Yeah, that's that's exactly right, and and that's the reason why they are doing that. Well, that's a fascinating interview. I hope that you enjoyed that. Now, we have more of it coming, about 10 more minutes of that interview coming up in the subscriber portion. If you're not a subscriber, please become a subscriber. Endtimes.com is where you go to subscribe. It's $7 a month, $77 a year. As a monthly subscriber, you get the first month for free. So if you want to just check it out, become a monthly subscriber. It's free for the first month. If you don't want to continue, fine. And if you do, that's great also. But become a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, I'm going to say goodbye to you. If you are a subscriber, we're going to take a short break here, and we'll be back with more of the interview from Dr. Tom Horn, and I'm also answering questions. <laughs>